Good evening YouTube. In this video I want to argue why I think an English Parliament would be a bad idea. There's a little bit of a setup to this but bear with me. There's something in British politics called the West Lothian question. It's named after West Lothian, the constituency of Tamdiel, uh, where he was the MP for that area at the time. It was named the West Lothian question by Enoch Powell but it is, as originally put, for how long will English constituencies and English honourable members tolerate at least 119 honourable members from Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland exercising an important and probably often decisive effect on English politics while they themselves have no say in the same matters in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Now that was from a debate in the 70s but it's come to the fore since 1999 when we started having devolution in the UK. It's come to the fore again more recently, or I think one of the reasons, is there have been a couple of things that have highlighted it. One is prescription charges, which I think I'm right in saying are, are different, you know, the more people don't pay them in Wales and Scotland than in England because their respective administrations have decided to provide funding for it, and more particularly universities. Undergraduate education in, the, in England now costs up to £9,000 a year. In Scotland it's free, and I think it's true in some circumstances in Wales as well. And that's, I think, highlighted the issue. And something's been set up called the Mackay Commission, possibly Mackay Commission, which is looking at one of the possible solutions to this, uh, to the, the unfairness illustrated by the West Lothian question of English MPs not being able to vote on exclusively Scottish or Welsh matters while a Scottish MP can vote on something that affects exclusively English matters. So the, this commission, the McKay Commission, is looking for a fix, an English Grand Committee or marking certain bills as English bills. Um, I'll link to the commission to the website of the commission. It's worth a quick look. I think from the submissions that have been put forward, the Grand Committee or English bills idea can be dispensed with pretty quickly. Firstly, it would be complicated. Um, there are some things, because it's asymmetric devolution, there are some things which would be England and Wales, some England and Northern Ireland, some England, Wales and Northern Ireland. So there'd be a whole, every bill there'd be a decision about exactly who is allowed to vote on it. Um, it would also be possible that you would effectively have two parliaments. What happens if a party has a majority in the entire UK but not for England. It is effectively unable to govern where England is concerned, which makes it almost a non-parliament. They would still be choosing, say, the Education Secretary, but none of their measures would get through, or few of them, presumably. And you have the problem of tax. If you say an, in an issue is English only, it still has tax implications which are across the entire UK. If you raise the taxes in one area, that has an effect somewhere else, or if you're spending money, that can have an effect somewhere else. I think it's going to be nigh on impossible to do. And so the the other, or one of the other answers that's put forward to um, the, uh, sorry, the West Lothian question is an English Parliament. So on to the meat of the video. There's a couple of particular complaints which always come up. One is the Barnett formula, which is the particular formula that allocates how money is spent to England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. People claim it's unfair. It may well be. Professor Barnett, who came up with it, thinks it needs revision. That isn't a justification for an English Parliament. I'm saying this now because somebody will bring it up. Um, if you think it's bad, amend or scrap the formula. Now, something that comes up which I think bears more consideration is that the English are a nation and should be treated equally to the Scottish or the Welsh. Um, and I think there's something to that. It certainly, you could say, establishes a right in some way. But just because it establishes that right doesn't mean it has to be exercised. There's a joke from Yes Minister, um, which is what the civil service knows, the politician syllogism. We must do something, this is something, therefore we must do it. Just because you have the right and the option to set up an English Parliament doesn't mean it's the best way of proceeding. 
And I, I, I don't think this, the, the idea of one nation per state and one state per nation is workable. If you take that beyond um, the confines of this island, clearly you'd end up with thousands of states and all sorts of strife. But even within the UK, what do you say about the Cornish? Uh, do you give them the right to their own um, administrative entity? I think ultimately, though, the, the, the best example of why, we, why it's a bad idea is if you look at the relative sizes of the entities. And ju just to make it clear, I'm going to scale up England, sorry, the UK in population size so it's the size of the United States. Imagine we quadruple in size. I think that's more or less what it is. So, to give you an idea of the sizes, this is population terms, not um, area terms. Northern Ireland would be Massachusetts, Maine and New Hampshire. Wales would be Washington State, Oregon, Nevada and Idaho. Scotland would be Georgia, North Carolina and Tennessee. England would be everything else. I think when you put it in that context, you see how massively, massively um, overweening an English parliament would be because it would be the great bulk of the population of the country and it would, it would dominate the affairs of the federal parliament to such an extent that it would almost be a joke. Just to put in some context, in this example, if the population of the UK was scaled up to that of the US, London would be California. Now, no disrespect to Scotland or Wales, but num numerically they're relatively unimportant. Let's say that Scotland became independent. Would you then still set up a Scottish par uh, an English parliament? Because it would look very strange indeed with um, a few millions in Wales and uh, Northern Ireland and 51 million or, or whatever it is in, in England. Because what you're effectively doing, given the small size of, of the other part, is setting up a, a second tier of government of very similar size immediately below Westminster that would still, that almost to all intents and purposes would be a simulacrum of Westminster. It just seems to, I hope that image illustrates just how much strain it would it would put on things because there'd be so much financial import that it would start tearing the union apart, I think. And this is a question that Vernon Bogdaner, not someone I usually like, raises in his submission to the commission. The examples he gives of um, uh, federal states that have one massively preponderant um, entity are the USSR and Yugoslavia. I do wonder how comparable they are, but um, the the principle I think perhaps is sound that the, the 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 amount of power that be put there would tear the thing apart. And you look at it administratively, and it looks I think silly. There is another answer which is sometimes given to the West Lothian question. Um, this was Jack Straw's answer, which was stop asking it. The problem is I think there are real legitimate concerns about this um, that need to be addressed, and I don't think people are going to, particularly as the evolution goes on longer and you see more differences, people are going to want that, that difference. Now, my preference, and I'll go into this in, at a future date about why I think this is a, a, a good idea, would be to have English regions, the English region of... Anglia or the West Country, whatever. Um, it answers the question quite easily. I'm, as probably people know, I'm um, sort of very generally in favour of devolution to the lowest level whenever possible. It sets up alternate centres of power that can stand against Westminster, and it means that you wouldn't just have a retirement home and a training ground for MPs waiting to go to Westminster. If you look at other countries which are federal or quasi-federal, that can be a political track, career path, away from just going for the chancellorship or the prime ministership, prime ministership or whatever it is of the whole country. Ultimately, there aren't any comfortable answers to this. But I just think that the, the idea of an English parliament would be to create something 
superfluous that would um, make a mock mockery of the idea of the United Kingdom or this country being united because it would be so much more powerful than the other bodies that it would it would effectively I think tear it apart and would be a wasted opportunity because you're setting up what is a fairly daft administrative system. Anyway, I'm Landon Cole. I'll see you next time.